Hi y'all, bonjour, hola, my name is Trish. I am so sorry this has taken so long to upload, but I have had issues for about three hours. I cannot explain why my computer was, was acting up, but I got it to work. So without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial. The first thing we are going to do is to create our canvas size. So we're going to go to File, New, and then our width, we're going to keep it at 14 and then the height at 10, resolution 300, and my dimensions are in inches. We're going to click OK. So the first thing is that our background is transparent. So we're going to fill that in by picking our paint bucket and my foreground is white, which is okay. I'm just gonna click inside and it's going to fill it in. So we wanna bring in our background. We're gonna go to our file and then I'm gonna bring in a couple of background images. So I'm gonna pull these two and I'm going to drag the two into this. I'm going to double click to deselect and then I'm going to turn on the top image. I'm going to pull that down like that and then with my, I'm going to pull it up just a little bit more, just like that. And then with my eraser tool is bigger and also my hardness is at zero. So we are going to click and Photoshop will access. Do we want to turn this image into a smart object? Yes. And we are going to erase the top portion to blend in the two images. But you can you notice that the eraser head is not showing. Whenever you see that, it means that your cup lock is on. Once you turn it off, you'll be able to see your eraser head and you can begin to brush and clean off your image so you get that smooth blend. So I'm going to reduce my opacity on this image. So we have something like this. I'm gonna take it up just a little bit more. And what I'm going to do now, you can see that the background of the bottom subject is now bleeding into our top image. So we want to click on that image and we are going to do the same thing. We're going to erase the bottom portion. So now that we have our bottom erased, the last thing we want to do is to add a gradient. So I'm going to click on my top image and then we are going to click on the adjustment levels, go to gradient and we are going to double click on the color. We are going to change that. I'm going to change that to like a blue of this sort and I'm going to click OK. OK here. Oh, I'm going to go back. So the end stop, we want to change that to sort of a purple-ish, so we get something like this. I like the mood it creates. And so I'm gonna click OK, and click OK, and then click OK. So basically, this is the background that we are working with. So the next thing that we are going to do is that we wanna bring in our main subject. So I'm gonna click on this image, and I'm just going to drag it into our working file and then release. And I'm going to set him right there. I'm going to double click to deselect. And then with my quick select tool, I'm going to click on select subject. And Photoshop is going to generate an outline around our subject. So once we have the selection, in some cases, you might have to clean it up, but as you can see, this is a very good selection. I don't have to do anything. 
even when I zoom in, you see that everything looks good. So I'm going to zoom out. And then with, and then I'm going to go down to my layers panel, my layer max icon. I'm going to click on that. So it hides everything else, only shows up the subject. Now we want to flip the subject. So you want to make sure that you have the layer selected. And we are going to go to Edit, Transform, and we're going to flip it horizontal so it faces the other direction. We're going to move him up, and we are going to set him. We're going to move him, rescale him like so. So now we have our subject in place. Next thing we're going to do from here is to type in the theme with our text tool activated. I'm going to type in the word prayer, text tool, highlight, and we want to change the font to impact. And just for your info, I will have the font and the background images available for you to use. So we're going to go to our property. We want to space out our text just a little. And we're going to collapse that. We are going to rescale. So we have something like this. I'm going to double click to deselect. I'm going to move the text over just a little. So we have something like this. And then I'm going to bring in an image that will replace the A. So I'm going to bring in this image. You can't see it, but you will see it once it shows up in Photoshop. It's a man kneeling. So I'm going to zoom. I'm going to rescale. And we are going to set that right there. So we want to change the color to white. I'm going to go to image adjustment and then hue saturation. And you want to take the lightness all the way to 100. We're going to click OK. And we basically take out the color. So now we want to add, we want to add a stroke effect to our text. But before we do that, we want to change the color. So I'm going to highlight the text. I'm going to double click on my foreground. And we're going to go for almost like a gold-ish color. So we have this is a good contrast against the purple and the blue. So what we are going to do, we want to make a duplicate of this text. And then the copy that we made, we want to right click. And then we want to convert that to a shape. So you go, you click on this to convert to a shape, not a smart object. So just take note of that. And now we want to click on our path select tool and notice that um, and notice that the text has been selected because it's now a shape. So we want to go up here where it says fail. We're going to double click. And we want to take out the color in the fail. And then for stroke, we are going to choose a white for the stroke. So the fill, oops, I have this layer turned on. That's why we are not um, seeing that once I took out the color, the fill um, goes away. So with this set, we want to go back to the stroke and we want to change the alignment to outside. And I'm going to collapse this. So we have our first stroke, but I don't want it to be an opacity of 100. I'm going to take it down to an opacity of 50. Or you can gauge it whichever way you want. And I'm going to make a duplicate of this. So for my second stroke, I want to take the pixel and we're going to make it 40 pixel. And I'm going to take the opacity even 
further down. And then I'm going to make another duplicate. We want to change the stroke on this to 60. I'm going to make a duplicate. And then we want to change the stroke to 80. And we're going to go ahead and turn on our text. So we basically have something like this. I want to change the color of prayer. We want to make it a little bit more orangey. I'm going to click OK. And uh, I have something like this, which is much better. Then I'm going to add a new layer. And then I'm going, going to change the color. I'm going to go for a purple, like the purple in here. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to use my paint bucket to fill that in. But we want to clip it to just that image. So I'm going to hold down my Alt. And then you see that a little down arrow has been activated on my mouse. So once you hit click, it will just infuse the color onto the subject or onto the layer beneath. So I'm going to select my text tool with my foreground as white. I'm going to type in, I'm going to highlight, and I'm going to choose a different font. Now this time I'm going to choose Scriptina, which I've used recently. So I'm going to go to my property, scroll down, and I want to change it from all caps so that we have lowercase. And I'm going to collapse this. We are going to move this text right. So we want to add a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to click on my text, double click at the right hand side of your layer. The blend options will open. We're going to add a drop shadow. And I like the way it looks. You can double click and reduce the spread if you feel it's too much, but I like it. So I'm going to click OK. So the next thing that we want to do is to keep adding. So, so what I'm going to do next is to type in the name of the church. So I'm going to click on my text tool and I'm just going to type in faith and I'm going to highlight everything. And I'm going to change that to, I'm changing that to Jill Sam MT. We want to add one more text. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this. And I'm going to pull this down. And I'm going to highlight. And then I'm going to highlight this. We're going to change the font color. So we're going to change the color to Lucida. Sand. And I'm going to zoom in a little. And then we're going to go to property. And we want to space this out a little. We're going to zoom out so we can see the full thing. So this is looking good so far. So I want to bring in the logo of the church, which I made up. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to our folder and I'm going to drag this in. I'm going to move it out a little so it's not on the text. I'm going to double click to deselect. And now you want to click on that layer, go to image adjustment, hue and saturation. We want to take out the color and click OK. So I'm going to go back to my image and we are going to drag this into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Eclipse Marquee tool and I'm going to make a big circle. And with my up and down arrow, I'm just going to set that or you can move that in the middle, something like that. And I want to make a copy. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to get rid of the bottom one. And 
I want to change the color. So I'm going to go to image adjustment, hue and saturation. And this time we want to change it to like a purple. I'm going to click OK. So we want to make a duplicate. So I'm going to select that and drag it to my duplicate icon. I'm going to turn this off. And I want this image to be infused onto this image, which is right below. So I'm going to click on this image and I'm going to take it down to where the other image is, which is right here. And I'm going to actually turn off this background color, turn on this image. And as you can see, it's already clipped. If your image doesn't clip to it, you have to hold down your Alt and then clip it. If you want to unclip, you hold down your Alt and then you can un unclip it. But we want to clip it, so we are going to go ahead and repeat the same thing. We want to go ahead and create an eclipse. And we're going to add our time. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill that layer in with white. So I'm going to pick my paint bucket and I'm going to click within the selected area, knowing that my foreground is white. I'm going to press Control D to deselect. I'm going to click on this image and I'm going to move it up just a little. And I'm going to pick my text tool and I'm going to type in, I'm going to collapse with my move tool. I'm going to rescale and I'm going to highlight and change that to all black. I'm going to move that and set it right there. I'm going to highlight again. And then I'm going to choose a different color, the purple in this. I'm going to highlight. So now that we have it the correct color, I want to make that black. But at the same time, I want to change this font to B Buzz. But this time, the B Buzz option allows me to change the thickness of my text. And I want that to be a little bit thinner. So this looks good. I want to add um, 11 a.m. sharp. So I'm going to pick my text tool and I'm going to type in the word sharp. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to change that to bold. So now that we have this, I want to add the day when this is going to take place. So I'm going to go back to the layer that I turned off the circle. I'm going to select that and we're going to scale it down. And I want to add a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to double click at the right hand of the layer. And I'm going to move this so you can see. I'm going to add a drop shadow. I'm going to double click on the drop shadow style so I can manipulate it just a little bit more. I want a bigger spread, but I want to reduce the opacity. So we have something like this and this looks good. I'm going to click and add a new text. And I'm going to select my 18 and bring it down just a little. I'm going to reposition it. And I'm going to reposition my text. So we have something like this. If it's too much, we can bring everything down. We're just going to select everything. And we are just going to scale it so that it doesn't become too prominent and our theme still stands out. So I'm going to move this 
out a little like so scale it down just a little bit more and we have something like this which is really good and the last thing that we want to add is the fact that this event is going to be held online so we're going to pick our text tool as a matter of fact i'm just going to click on my present and i'm going to pull it down to make a duplicate i'm going to click on that duplicate and pull that down here and with my text tool i'm going to highlight I'm going to move it a little bit closer, something like that. And now we are just going to go ahead and pick our rectangular marquee tool. We're going to zoom in and we just want to draw just a thin line right here. And we are going to create a new layer. With our paint bucket, we want to fill that in with white. You might have to zoom in and make sure that it's filled in. Control D to deselect. I'm going to zoom out. So we have something like this. And now the last thing that I'm going to add is the Facebook and the YouTube uh, link where this is being streamed. So I'm going to go back to my folder and we are going to bring in the Facebook icon. I'm going to double click to deselect. With my text tool activated, I want to go to image, adjustment, hue, saturation. We're going to take the likeness all the way to 100. And that takes out the color. We're going to move this icon and set it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and also bring in the YouTube button. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And we wanna get rid of the white. So I'm gonna pick my lasso tool. And then I'm going to zoom in. And I'm just going to eyeball and draw a line around the white doesn't have to be perfect because you can't see it that much anyway so we are going to erase the white Control d and we are done and we are going to move that and set that right beneath our facebook icon i'm going to move that over just a little now, the last thing, we're going to click on image adjustment, hue, saturation. We're going to take out the color and click OK. So if you zoom out. So this is how it looks, guys. So the last thing is to add the name. Um, so we're going to type in. So I'm going to highlight this. And we are going to change that to the jail. And I'm going to scale it down. So we have something like this. I'm going to click on the Facebook and the YouTube. I'm going to click on the names. So this is it, guys. It's very simple to do. You just have to play with a few elements. So you can see that the, the, the main thing that was different in this case, or the new technique that I showed you guys, was how to create the stroke effect for your text. But everything else is basically things that I've been doing in different tutorials that you are used to. So. I hope you found this tutorial very helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.